Welcome to Debbie's Back Porch. Tonight we're going to make Swedish meatballs. These will be great. Here are your ingredients. You might want to pause, write these down. I've left a couple extra seconds because folks said they needed it. Well, here I have uh, the crumbs of two slices of day-old bread. I just trimmed off the crust, put them in my food processor, whipped them up a little bit, and I'm adding a half cup milk. Uh, this is whole milk, and I'm gonna mix these together and let them sit for a little while because I want the um, bread to soak up the milk. If it's not quite enough bread, I'll add some bread crumbs later. But right now, we're just going to go with this. In my cast iron skillet, I have about two tablespoons of butter. And I've let it melt. It started bubbling. And I'm going to put the half of a finely minced onion in here. We don't want to caramelize it. We're just going to let it get transparent. Uh, I'm going to let it sweat a little gonna put a little salt to help that along. We want just a tiny bit of color on this, but not much. This is what we want, just softened up good. I'm gonna take it off uh, but I'm, and turn my pan off, but I'm gonna leave the pan right here because we'll finish up in this same pan. So I let the onions cool a little bit, and then I'm gonna dump them here into this breadcrumb slurry which actually looks a little thin to me, like maybe I could have used a little more bread. Well, I'll worry about that in a minute. Right now, I'm gonna grate in just a little, an eighth to a quarter teaspoonful of fresh nutmeg. Uh, I usually have powdered nutmeg, but I've started using the fresh nutmeg and it is so much better, I recommend. Half teaspoon of salt. You actually need that much. There's a lot of meat in this recipe. And some finely ground pepper. You know, this is a mixture of black and red. I'm going to beat up an egg and put in here. I don't know if you've noticed, this looks an awful lot like meatloaf. Mix that in good. And yeah, it's a little thin. So I'm going to add a little matzo meal breadcrumbs uh, and see if this is not won't thicken up just a little bit. We don't want this to make the meat into mush. We've got to make, got to form it into balls. Uh, and this is your binder and your spices and everything here in one bowl. So I'm going to add a little more. If I need more, I will. And of course, I almost forgot one thing, and it's a very important thing, allspice. Uh, allspice is in almost every Swedish meatball recipe I've ever seen. And I'm putting in about a half a teaspoonful. I'm gonna stir this up, and then we'll make the balls. Here I have a pound of ground beef uh, and about a quarter pound of sausage. It's not real lean ground beef, uh, so I didn't want to add too much sausage, but you've got a lot of flexibility here. You could use up to a pound and a half of meat total, whichever way you want to mix it. Pouring about half of the slurry in, and you know you're going to have to get your hands in it. Just wash your hands and put them in there. You're going to have to. Uh, so I'm using the dry hand, wet hand method in case I need to grab something. When you get that well mixed, pour in the rest of the slurry. It's just easier to do it half at a time. When you get it mixed, we're gonna test a little bit and see how it holds together. And if it doesn't hold together well, you might still add a few more breadcrumbs. Next time I'll start with four pieces of bread instead of two. Make a note. So we're going to mix that in well. Don't, don't really want to find breadcrumbs in the middle of one of the meatballs. 
And when you get it mixed up, kind of pat it down. We're going to cover this uh, and put it in the fridge. I want to let it sit for about 20 to 30 minutes at least, longer if you want to, uh, in the fridge. I want to make sure all those breadcrumbs get fully rehydrated and that the flavors meld a little bit. I hate plastic wrap. So I went away and did something else for about an hour. It's been about an hour. I actually went and washed some dishes because, you know, Martha Stewart just won't send her helpers over here to me. I have to wash my own. Uh, I have to the side here a little bowl of uh, water to dip my hands into uh, to um, make it a little easier to make these meatballs. And I'm measuring out about a heaping tablespoonful each. If you have a sorbet scoop, you can use that. You want to keep these about an inch uh, in diameter. You don't want them to be too big. You don't want to have to cook them that long. Uh, so these are about an inch. They're a little over a tablespoonful, a heaping tablespoonful each. And if you dip your hands in some water, they'll roll really nicely without sticking to your hands. You do want to kind of get them smooth. It does matter with these meatballs uh, that they be formed into fairly uniform size and the little nooks and crannies are evened out. So this is how I do it. And I'm going to do all the meat and then come back to you. All done. I have them on wax paper here. And they're pretty close to the same size. Not exactly. This is a lot. There are just two of us. I'm going to freeze half of these. I'll meet you at the stove. So you know I don't have a camera person, right? I do all this myself. So I didn't turn my camera on to show you me putting these pretty little meatballs into the medium high heat butter. This is whole butter. Uh, I put the rest of the stick from the two tablespoons full. Uh, I'll show you putting in the next bunch. So once you get them in, uh, you want them to sizzle a little bit and move them pretty carefully. I actually use a spoon instead of a spatula for this because I can be a little gentler. Uh, some people just shake the pan, but I've got cast iron and I really don't shake the pan. Uh, it's too heavy and stuff will come out of it. You can see I didn't crowd the pan. I'm going to let them cook about two minutes on the first side and then carefully turn them. These rounds, you'll have to turn them more than once. And we're not trying to cook them done. We're trying to brown them because they're going to cook a while in the gravy or the sauce uh, and I'm cooking them in batches. You don't have to worry about them being hot because we're going to put them back into uh, the gravy that we make later. So right now we just want to get some nice browning all the way around. And you do have to be a little gentle with these. These are pretty tender. That's one of the things that makes them Swedish meatballs and makes them good. So they've almost browned enough, but we've got some little pink spots. So I'm going to give them another turn sort of up on the side. And I may have to prop them up a little bit. But I do want the browning pretty much all the way around. A lot of flavor comes from that. Uh, and, and I want to make sure that they get done when I put them in the gravy later. So I'm going to give them one more turn. These are looking pretty good. And you see that foaming in the pan? Don't, don't worry about that. It's not the butter burning. There's uh, the butter in there and there's some uh, grease from the sausage and the beef. Uh, so it just foams a little bit, but it's not burning and it's not going to taste burned. So we're going to take these up, put them in a bowl. And they do smell wonderful. And here's the part you missed when I didn't turn my camera on. Uh, I'm, I'm putting the meatballs in. You can see about how much sizzle I have. These are on a medium heat. Don't want to do it too fast. Spread them out. Add them kind of slowly. Don't want to bring your temperature down too much. 
And in my pan, I can do about seven or eight. You don't want to crowd it. Too much moisture at one time brings the temperature down and affects the color. All cooked. Now I'm going to make a sauce and I need to measure the amount of fat I use. And I'm going to use this same fat. The butter, the pork fat, the beef fat, uh, all the flavor is in there. And you see all the little crunchy bits. So I measured this and I've reserved a half cup and put it back into the pan. And I'm, I'm not going to take any of the fond out. I think it's wonderful. So what we're going to do now is make a nice brown gravy, pretty much. Uh, just like any brown gravy. I've got half cup of fat in there and I'm going to add a half cup of all-purpose flour and stir it in. I add it kind of slowly. Make sure I get it incorporated in. And we're gonna stir this around for about a minute, get the raw flour edge off, and I'll be back. We want a little color in this, so just like brown gravy, uh, I've let the flour brown a little bit, get a little bit of color in it. And I'm using beef broth. Now, a lot of folks use chicken broth. I have used chicken broth. Uh, but I'm gonna use beef broth in this just because that's the flavor I want. So I have it room temperature. I should have chilled it, but it's room temperature. And you pour in a little bit, stir it in, a little bit more, stir it in. I know it looks to you like it's going to be lumpy, but as long as you have a hot roux uh, and cold liquid, the lumps will stir right out. So you just whisk, whisk, whisk. Very important. We add a little bit at a time. It gets pasty. Then you stir it some more. I'm going to turn my heat up. And you just keep whisking, and all of a sudden it turns into silk. Let's add the rest now. Once you get that silky texture, you can add the rest of it. And see all those little pieces of fond in there? I promise you, somebody's going to say, Ooh, you had little burned bits. They're not burned. It's fond. They're good. They're little pieces of meat and onion, and they're browned. But if they bother you, because apparently they do bother some folks, you can very easily strain them out. So now that we have some thickness here, I'm going to add the meatballs back in. And we're going to let them sit and simmer for a bit. Uh, probably five, eight minutes, something like that. I'll take one out and check it uh, to make sure that the meatballs are done. Doesn't that look great? Thick and rich. I'm going to get one out. And we're going to check it for doneness. We've still got quite a few minutes for it to cook. Uh, so let's see what we got. Well, it's still a little bit a little bit pink. Uh, almost done. I'm going to let them simmer here for about another three or four minutes, and it'll be done all the way through. I don't want to overcook them. So I'm going to put that one back. I'm not sacrificing it. I'll just have two half meatballs. So now that we're sure they're done, I'm going to add in a half cup of sour cream. You can use creme fraiche. If I'd had creme fraiche, I would have used it because it blends in more smoothly. But sour cream is fine because uh, we're not going to cook this much longer at all. Just going to gently stir this in. And don't forget now, I've got a video on how to make your own creme fraiche. If I had thought about it, I would have made some for this. But gently stir it, let it simmer just a couple minutes until it looks like this. And if it's hot, it's done. Let's plate it up. I've been cooking my noodles, we're ready. And there you have it, Swedish meatballs. We decided to serve it over noodles. Uh, you could also serve it over mashed potatoes. You could serve it over rice. 
You could serve it over toast. Uh, the gravy is rich and thick, and the meatballs are tender. And that's a difference with Swedish meatballs. The texture is more tender than, say, Italian meatballs because of the slurry that you made. Uh, and I want you to look at that texture. Totally done, but not hard. Tender all the way through and tasty. You can taste the allspice and nutmeg. And oh wait, I forgot something important. Swedish meatballs are supposed to be served with lingonberry jelly. Um, I don't have any lingonberry jelly. But you can also use bramble jelly. And bramble jelly is raspberry or blackberry. And I have some blackberry preserves here. So that little tiny bit of sweetness really brings a lot to this dish. I really hope you try this. It has several steps, but it's not hard. Uh, and it, it's kind of fun to do, and you end up with something pretty impressive. Thank you for joining us on Debbie's Back Porch. Hope to see you again tomorrow.